In this video, we'll be taking a look at how to use material-based displacement with Natite in Unreal Engine 5.4. We'll also be taking a look at what you should be aware of to make sure that your displacement looks something like this with proper shading and lighting, and not something like this that feels flat and incorrectly lit. To begin, we'll start off with a brand new project in Unreal. The very first thing that we're going to have to do is enable Nanite displacement within our project. To do this, I want to create a new folder, and I created a folder here called Displacement, and I'm going to right-click on it and just go to Show in Explorer, and that will open up the path on my computer that holds this project. You'll want to navigate back a few directories, and you should see something like this, which is the root of your project folder. You're going to want to go into the config folder and then look for the default engine INI file. Once you've opened up that INI file, look for this section called render settings. And right underneath it, you can really add it anywhere, but I'm going to add it right underneath here. We're going to want to add two commands. The two commands we're going to want to add is going to be r.nanite.tessellation equals one and r.nanite.allow tessellation equals one. That's going to allow tessellation and also turn on tessellation for nanite meshes. Finally, we'll save this and then we'll want to restart Unreal and reopen up our project. Once I've restarted Unreal, I can go into this displacement folder that I created and import some mesh to test this out with. I'll import the static mesh rock wall sample. And once you create a material, or once we open up this material that comes with it called rock wall sample, you'll be able to tell if your INI file worked. If it did work, you should see this displacement pin now under our material. And that's where we'll be able to add our displacement. To enable this displacement pin, what we're going to do is click on an empty spot on our graph here or just click on our main material. And in the details under search, I'm going to search for tessellation. And you'll find a checkbox called enable tessellation. Once I enable that, we'll get the ability to plug in our displacement. Next, I'll import the textures that I want to connect to our displacement. So I'm just going to go grab these textures that you'll get access to if you are part of the Patreon. I'll connect all those textures up to my material. And once I've done that, I can click save and make sure that I apply this material to my model. Now we're going to notice that there's no displacement happening right now. And the reason for that is we have to make sure that our model has Nanite enabled. Right click on it and go to my Nanite and make sure Nanite is enabled. Once I've done that, then we'll notice that this wall becomes a little bit deformed or actually has some displacement now. And if that displacement isn't strong enough or isn't as strong as I'd want it, we're going to have to go back to the material, click on our main material here, and we can scroll down or we can search displacement and you'll have a section called magnitude, which is the strength of displacement. So I'll set this to something like 10 and then save that material. Now, if we take a look at our mesh, it's displacing quite a bit more. And if I were to go back and set this to something like 25 and then click save, then it displaces even more. Now there's another option here called center. This is at what grayscale value is considered the center point of your displacement. So if I were to look at my displacement map right here, just from this thumbnail, if I have my center point set to something like 0.5, that means anything brighter than 0.5 gray will push out and anything darker than 0.5 gray will push in. So that center determines at what part is your kind of mid-level or kind of the mid-ground value of your displacement. If it's set to zero, then all your displacement pushes out unless if you were to have negative values or something in your displacement map. And that's really all there is to it. That's how we can do some simple material-based displacement with Nanite. Now there's one more catch here. Most of the time you're going to have a normal map for your object that you're doing displacement on, which will solve a lot of problems. In some cases where you don't have a normal map, your displacement's going to look wrong. For example, if I have this generic sphere and I don't necessarily have a normal map 
for its displacement, and I displace it with something more procedural. Maybe I go to this generic sphere, I go to the nanite, I enable it, I go to my material that I have for it, and I do something like go in here and enable the tessellation and connect the displacement to a noise, which is a procedural. If we were to preview this, it looks something like this. And maybe I go in here and adjust some of its settings, make it like a, a larger scale value, maybe a bit less detailed, maybe uh, a bit less level scale, something like that. So if I were to take something like this and displace it with that, and maybe I'll have to add a little bit more strength for displacement, so magnitude five or something, and I save that, and we take a look at this, it has details, and maybe I'll pile that a bit more. I'll go in here and set this to 0 0.05. So it has details, but it doesn't feel like it's shading correctly. And this is because it doesn't have correct normals. When you displace a surface with this material-based displacement, it changes the mesh shape, but it doesn't recalculate the normals. So it's still being lit as if it was just a sphere without all these details and shapes that have been added. There'll still be shadows from those details and shapes, but the normals are technically incorrect. So how can we solve that if we don't have a normal map? Now, one way you might be thinking to generate a normal map is to take our texture and do something like a normal from height map. And this technically would work if we had a texture, but since we have a procedural here, we can't connect this up to this normal from height map because this normal from height map expects a T2D or a texture object. And our noise is not a texture object and cannot be converted to a texture object. So that won't work in this case. So another thing that we can do is approximate the vertex normals by getting the vertice normals in world space, so vertex normal world space, and getting the derivatives for x and y, so ddx and ddy, and then doing a cross product of those two things, and then normalizing it and using that as our normals. And that will give us approximate vertex normals. And that kind of works. It shades better, but you'll notice a lot of faceting. So even though that kind of works, it's not the best solution. The next thing we could do, and I'll delete all this here, is to pretty much create normals by using our texture or procedural here. And this is actually not too hard to do. All we'll really have to do is take our texture and it won't be perfect, but we could do the same kind of thing. Get the derivative, ddx, ddy, and we'll take those two things. We'll do a append. So I'm binding them together. And then what we're going to do is multiply it by negative one. You might have to flip this depending how you want the normals to look, but in this case, most cases, you're going to multiply it by negative one. And then what I could also do is multiply it by strength, or I could just normalize it, or multiply it by strength and then normalize it. And then finally, append one more vector, but this will be just one, a constant of one. And if we think about what we're doing here is we're taking the texture, we're getting the derivatives in x, y, appending those two together. So this a acts as the red channel, the b acts as the green channel. We pretty much invert those or make them negative and then normalize it and then append a color blue. Each time we append, it's adding a additional slot. So it's almost like we're building a red, green, and blue value or a vector three. So we have our first value, red, we append green, and then we append 
blue. And if I were to preview this, look what we get. We kind of get a normal map from our noise texture. And if I connect that to my normals, it's not perfect, but it's going to give us some nice normals or a bit of a faked normal. And if I save that and we look at this now, now it feels like it has much better lighting interaction because we have those normals, which is kind of giving that surface the proper reaction with light that it should kind of have um, from our displacement. So that's kind of what we can do to resolve those issues of having it feel like it's not being shaded correctly if you don't have a normal map available. And one final cool thing about this is since I use that procedural noise, that noise is calculated in world space. So if I move this ball, the noise actually changes based on the location of this object and our displacement and normals all get updated uh, with that movement as well. If you enjoyed this video or you learned something new, don't forget to like, subscribe, and if you're part of the Patreon, which you can find a link to down in the description below, you'll also get access to the PDF for this video and also PDFs for many of the other videos that I have that go over all the steps that we went over in this video in a little bit more detail and a little bit more information as well.